I think what we do as architects is serious business. It's a major investment. It involves generations of users into the future. We like to bring in the broadest set of ideas and invest our buildings for the long term so that they will speak to the current and future users. Over about a 20-year period, the city developed a master plan for the Civic Center. And over the period of years, the city hall became too small. And part of the Civic Center master plan was to do a new addition to the city hall. And that's what this project is. And in that conversation, there was a lot of interest in what should the level of sustainability be for a project like this. This project has a set of intentions that were developed with the city of Santa Monica that I think are kind of unique to Santa Monica. We achieved a full living building challenge, all the pedals, which is a very difficult and rare thing. We also wanted to express the ethos of civic transparency, which is very important in Santa Monica, and also uh, refer to Santa Monica's uh, tradition as a creative community. I think that this whole downtown core, which includes the Civic Center area, is really part of a larger plan to create a very walkable coastal city. So the idea is that both residents and many, many visitors who come to Santa Monica really have this sense of, of a continuous, very accessible urban fabric with Tongva Park and City Hall really at the heart of it. Where we're standing today is the courtyard between the original City Hall, a historic uh, building, and the new annex, which essentially closes off the U-shape into a courtyard. We think of this as an outdoor room. The building has an ethereal quality that refers to the light and space work of James Terrell and Robert Irwin that had its origins in Santa Monica. The fact that we have a place in the building that's a very nice environment for people to be in contributes to the wellness, I think, for everybody, all the occupants, and in fact, public that uses the building as well. We were able to retain this natural space. City Hall existing is, I think, we would believe the crown jewel of Santa Monica. We respected the scale of the building, so our building is shorter than this building. We made sure that the architectural strategy of the building, the way it looks, was deferential to the building relative to uh, the articulation. And we really had to think about this building not just as one building, but as part of a suite of three buildings. And so this building really, we felt, needed to be the moment of quiet and reflection, literally and figuratively, between two articulated you know, buildings uh, very much of their era. We were trying to do something that was more timeless, in a way more contemplative, and more abstract in its references to art. A lot of the inspiration, the kind of light touch character of the building came from its context being this very slender site behind the historic Deco Modern City Hall. A lot of the geometry was driven by performance, but also by that building, taking the datums across, respecting kind of the light, concrete color of the historic building, and also taking the idea of the California light and air as inspiration for reflectivity we were trying to do with glass. As Robert Irwin and Jim Terrell would say, art is not an object, it's an experience. And that's part of what we were trying to do with this, was in a way dematerialize the building, have it dissolve into the environment. It reflects the clouds, it reflects the trees, the different light conditions and the way that fog comes in, Santa Monica. You know, the real goal of the building is to improve the lives of the people working there wellness of this workplace. So everything was in pursuit of that. There's also the efficiency and the, and the increase in service of having all of the people in one location. The efficiency of that, not having to run different, around town to, to different users. You'll find in the interior of this space a very open environment. There are very few actual closed offices in this space, and most of those are in fact used partially as conference rooms and swing spaces when their occupants are not involved. In order to compensate for that sense of openness, you do need those places to have heads down focused work. So we have retreat rooms where if you need to make a private phone call or have a you know, more confidential conference call or a conference meeting with other people, 
then that can happen. On the ends of the building, there are break rooms that really have more of a cafe-like environment that can also be used not just for informal meeting, but for working, and people really like to just gather there and have conferences or casual conversations. We also had intentions to create a equitable workspace. There's a priority given to some of the community spaces on the north end of the building with the best views of the mountains. This space is an example of it. It's not only an outdoor room, which serves as a waiting room for the city services, but it's an edible garden. It's a public space for the community. It's open to all. All of the landscaping has some kind of edible component. You could make tea out of it, you can eat it. It relates in a way to the building being this kind of living, breathing element. So we worked really closely with the city to measure what that right level of sustainability would be. And at that moment, the International Living Futures Institute had developed the LBC, Living Building Challenge, standards. We chose that, that highest level. It really made a lot of sense. They were close collaborators for us. And I think the city felt like it was good to do a prototype, a demonstration project to show other developers, of which there's a lot of in Santa Monica, what could be achievable. The Living Building Challenge really goes above and beyond LEAD in the sense that it's not just considering some of the more, let's call them conventional tenets of sustainability. It's looking at sustainability and resilience from a much more holistic perspective. Things like equity and beauty, those things matter to people, especially in this day and age. The idea is that we wanted to really create a sustainable environment, not just through bells and whistles, but through things that are really deeply rooted in making a space that's nice for people to be in. It's really a network of solutions. The net zero energy, net zero water, daylight, natural ventilation. And so there's a series of things that work together to support each other. Over 50% of the water consumed in the building comes from the flushing of toilets and urinals. So by using composting toilets, we eliminated that element completely. There's a well on this site. In fact, I think it's somewhere in this courtyard. So we collect water in the years that we get our 14 and a half inches of rain, and we use that water then to operate the building. The building is covered with photovoltaic. The parking adjacent to the city hall has photovoltaic. That in itself makes us net zero energy. This building is majority of the heating and cooling comes from radiant cooling. And that radiant cooling comes from the fact that it's a concrete structure. So the building is essentially made up of 100% glass and it might be counterintuitive that a all glass building could be so sustainable. The building has a five or six different types of glass used in different ways that allows us to moderate the light. You'll see there's a lines on the building, it's called ceramic frit, and that blocks the sunlight from going into the building, but still allows a little bit of natural glow in there. The lower windows are automatically controlled by the building management system, so when we need more natural ventilation. So we allow a lot of natural light in, but what we do on the other hand is have to be able to control the solar gain so the building doesn't get too hot inside. But in a way it's kind of like a human body. It's a very natural extension of the building systems all working together in a really organic way. This building was built at a point in time and some of these technologies are very new but the cost of these systems are declining. And the more widespread their use is going to be, the more available they're going to be. To achieve a project at this level takes an enormous and cohesive team effort. And the consultants really dug deep to achieve this level of sustainability. The city made a huge commitment trying to do a demonstration for the level of sustainability that, that should be seen as a standard, if not immediately, uh, for the future. It will stand as a kind of a public object lesson. It's saying this is possible and this is what we need to do.